Hi everybody and welcome to another Fat Biker video. And in this video I'm going to talk about the latest upgrade that I have done on this bike which is converting the bike from a 7 speed bicycle into a 21 speed bicycle. Okay so let's just go and take a closer look. As you can see I got a 3 speed crankset made by Shimano and I got a direct mount Shimano front derailleur with a direct mount clamp and a direct mount spacer. Now there's a couple of things that you guys need to know before you do this type of conversion on your fat bike. It could be a mongoose fat bike or any other fat bike on the market that doesn't come equipped with a, a 21 speed um, powertrain. Okay. Uh, first of all, there are different derailleurs out there on the market that you can use. But most of those derailleurs, they will be compatible pretty much with any regular bike. But when it comes to fat bikes, your choices are limited because fat bikes got a larger bottom bracket. So when it comes to clamp clamp mounted, you know, the railers, that's out of the question. You won't be able to use them because they won't be they won't reach the crank set. So that leaves you two choices. You can use a E-type derailleur, which is the type of derailleur that comes with a built-in bracket that allows you to mount up the derailleur directly into the crank set cup. Or you can do what I did over here, which is buying these clamp adapters, direct mount adapters, and buy a direct mount derailleur. Okay, before I did this conversion with this uh, the, the, the equipment that I got over here, I had an E-type derailleur installed over here. And it was a disaster putting that on this bike because when I mounted, I had two issues. One issue is that this side over here didn't lock properly because by me mounting the derailleur on the on the, the um, bottom bracket cup, it just moved everything out of alignment. So I wasn't able to lock this ring over here. And the other issue that I had was that for some reason, the derailleur uh, was mount, uh, it, it was lined up in a way that it didn't reach the last ring gear over here of my crankset. So that was a waste of time and money. And because of that reason, I was forced to, you know, get rid of that type of conversion, that type of equipment, and rethink everything so that way I could do everything done the proper way. So the last option would be the right one, which is the one that I got over here, that is buying the direct mount derailleur and the direct mount clamp and spacer. Okay. There's another issue with that. As you know, this bicycle comes with a uh, seven speed powertrain. So all the components that you buy for the seven speed powertrain, they have to be compatible with a seven speed powertrain. Now, seven speed powertrains are compatible with either eight speed and six speed powertrains when it comes to Shimano. They all work with the same crank sets, the same derailleurs pretty much, and the same chain. Okay, so, that's not an issue with that. But the problem is when it comes to direct mount from the railiers, if you go to whatever website, you know, you could go to the Shimano website, you can go to the SRAM website, you can go to the uh, Sunrace website. Uh, direct mount the railiers, they are only made for nine speed and up. So what's the difference between the nine speed and the uh, seven speed uh, powertrain? The difference is the derailleur cage, which is this part over here because the seven speed is wider than the one for the nine speed. And the reason for that is because the chain on the seven speed is a larger chain, it's a thicker chain than the one for the nine speed. Still, because this is the next step, when it comes to those sizes, it works. I managed to get it to work and it works perfectly. I got no issues with that. Now, there's another thing that you need to know when you put this type of the derailleur on on this type of conversion since it's not a direct fit and that is the derailleur itself as you can see it's mounted really high above the chain ring and the way it's supposed to be mounted is like the cage the edge over here of the cage is not supposed to be further um farther than three millimeters from the top of the ring gear but as you can see it's almost like 10 millimeters the distance. There was a reason I had to do that. Let's go to the other side. As you can see, this part over here of the derailleur, 
when I had this thing mounted the proper way, when I was shifting uh, from second gear to third gear to the larger uh, ring gear, this piece over here was rubbing with the middle gear, which is the second gear. And because of that, I couldn't mount this thing properly. So I had two choices. Either I had to cut it with a Dremel tool or just mount it harder, just the way I did it here. Well, I, I, I decided not to cut it because that might affect the structural integrity of the derailleur. Now, when it comes to the chain, as you can see, I got a different chain over here. This is not a factory chain. And the reason I did that is because I got the mega wrench in the back. If I had the factory free wheel, which the largest gear, the largest cog is uh, 28, then this whole system will work perfectly with the factory chain. But because I had this thing first, because before I did the conversion, I put the mega wrench. When I was on the largest gear in the back and on the largest gear in the front, the derailleur was, you know, so moved so far forward that it was almost touching this pipe over here. So the chain that I got over here is four links larger than the factory chain. Now, when I purchased this chain and I put it next side by side next to the factory chain, it was only two links larger. So I had to buy another chain like this one and take two links out of that chain and add it to this one so in that way it could be four links larger and in that way the derailleur depends on what gear I'm in the front on what gear I'm in the back it won't go way too far forward or way too far back okay and that's what I had to do to get this thing to work now let's talk about the cables the shifting cable that I got there's three ways you can mount it you can the easiest way would be just put a single cable housing that will go all the way up to the shifter and just use zip tie to secure it. Now you want the cable to be exposed the same way I got over here to uh, cable housings. Then you got two choices when it comes to that. You can buy clamps. This tube over here is 38 millimeters. So problem solver, they make a clamp that will fit on the 38 millimeter tube. And that clamp is a cable stop clamp. And you can, that, that would be the easiest way for you to install the cable the way I got it right here. And the last choice is the one that I did over here, which is bind these little brackets and mount it with rivets in the front and the back. You will need a 2.5 millimeter uh, drill bit that is designed to drill on hard metal. And also you will need a rivet tool and, uh, and use a spacer because of the design of the bracket you can just use the rivet tool to mount the rivets in here. You will need also a spacer that you will have to put between the rivet tool and the rivet itself. So in that way you can apply the pressure properly without the, 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 this part of the bracket you know getting on the way of doing the, the installation. Now let's talk about shifters. Uh, shifters, you can pick whatever shifter you, you like. As you can see, I got two kinds of shifters over here. And the reason for that is because before I did the conversion over here, I had this bike came with a crappy twist shifter and I purchased the Shimano Rebo shift. And I'm really happy the way it works. I got no complaints with this. But then when I did the conversion, I had the choice to buy another one of this and put on this side. But the only reason I didn't do it is because if I do that, as you can see, the handle grip in the, on this side is smaller than this one. So I would need another one of those or cut this one over here. And because I didn't want to mess, you know, with the original you know, uh, uh, handle grip of the bike, I decided to buy a thumb, um, a thumb uh, shifter from this side. But you got the choice to put two of this on the bike or you can put two of those on the bike and that's it, okay? So pretty much this is the end of the video. Uh, before you guys go, I'm gonna put screenshots that shows the eBay uh, sellers where I purchased some of the equipment that I got over here. And it shows, you know, the model of each equipment, you know, and everything that you need to know. So that way you can do the conversion, okay? And also I'm gonna put screenshots of other 
components that, that might be compatible. They might work perfectly or they might work kind of perfectly, but that's up to you. I would strongly recommend you guys to put the scene side equipment that I got over here. Okay. Now, when it comes to the performance, the way this thing works, I did line up everything in a way that the shifting action is perfect. And it doesn't matter what gear I am in the front. When I'm shifting in the back, you don't hear in any moment the, the chain rubbing with the cage of the front derailleur because the front derailleur is not set up properly. It just works fine. It doesn't matter what gear I'm in the front and what gear I'm in the back. The only time you hear the you know the, the, the noise or you know the clicky clackety noise is when you're doing the shifting in the front. And when it comes to you know how it does the shifting, well, in most cases, depending on what gear I am in the back, it will shift instantly, or it would be like a delay of like one or two seconds. But it always shifts. When it comes to shifting, it never melts, it always does the shifting action. Okay, so it, it works fine. I'm really glad. Even if the derailleur is not really designed to this power, for this powertrain, and it's not mounted 100% the way it's supposed to. Okay, so thanks for watching, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.